It's happening. Adults across the country can buy cannabis. People have a lot of questions, so I invite some friends over to talk about it. Joining me today is Manisha Krishnan from Vice Canada. The way that legalization is unfolding, it's clear that it will be a shit show. Jamie Shaw, a cannabis advisor. The product's not going anywhere. The market's not going anywhere. And Alan Gertner from Haiku. We're going to have to basically teach an entire country how to roll a joint. I'm Chuck Rafici, and we're talking to this. We're not going to have legal edibles in Canada for at least a year. Should we have them a lot sooner? Yes, I mean, for medical. Um, on the rec side, we could probably take the time and wait, but um, the, the fact that patients haven't had access to medical cannabis edibles is, is huge. Yeah, I, I agree, and medical should happen should happen yesterday. We should be providing people who are uh, sick or need their medication uh, every safe way possible to consume cannabis in a way that's effective for them. In the rec market, I think from day one we should have vape pens. Uh, yes. From day one we should have as many modes as possible uh, to combat the black market, to offer a great regulated supply chain. But I also understand the argument that maybe edibles should be or could be six months out because we do have a lot we are dealing with from day zero. Yeah, I agree. I think that the way that legalization is unfolding, it's clear that it will be a shit show and probably regardless of what they do, it's going to be, you know, a bit chaotic. So I'm okay with them, you know, taking a bit of time because I feel like the government's like heads are going to collectively explode right now, even just with what they are doing. But I fully agree that, you know, a long time ago, patients should have been given access and it's actually ridiculous. Uh, that they aren't given access to buy edibles. Yeah, a lot of people I know, their favorite cannabis product already is an edible from the black market. I think also, um, you know, for targeting like an older demographic, like, you know, someone's parents who wants to try it out, they're gonna be less inclined to wanna, you know, smoke a joint or what have you. I think that it would be a lot, you know, more comfortable for a lot of people, a lot of Canadians trying out cannabis to do it in an edible form. So it makes a lot of sense. and it's honestly probably going to make shitloads of money once they do bring it onto the market. It is somewhat funny, too, that we're going to have to basically teach an entire country how to roll a joint, right? Because we're not giving them any <laughs> alternative for consuming cannabis. We're going to all have to learn for the period of one year how to roll a joint. I don't and know how to roll a joint. You don't know how to roll a joint? I have to learn, yeah. yeah. Do you not know how to roll a joint? I do not. Really? Yeah. Oh, there always seems to be somebody around that knows how to roll one. <laughs> you, do you have a joint roller who comes around with you? <laughs> I wish. Yeah. That's a good idea. I've gotten better at it lately, but yeah, it's a tricky skill. Yeah, I don't care about my ability to roll, to roll you a need joint. You need to be nimble. But let's talk about the medical side. I mean, uh, you know, if people have never tried an edible, why is it so important for patients to have edibles today? Well, or yesterday. One, one smoking. I just think the, the idea that we're in forcing, basically forcing people to smoke is a bad decision. Well, they can vape. Kids. Kids? Right? Yeah, like, I mean, better. Yeah. You know, when you're I mean, talking about um, Liam McKnight, for example, you know, he was one signed up early in the licensed producer system and technically was supposed to be rolling joints and smoking him. He's went four, right? Um, for his Dravet syndrome for those yeah, seizures, right? Yeah, that was one of the few things that New Jersey got right is they were only going to allow edibles for kids. Mm -hmm. And it kind of ties into this whole think of the kids and, and fear mongering that's been happening that's kind of led to this exact opposite situation where it's like okay well if they need it they can smoke but they still can't eat it in a cookie which makes no sense at all but also if you're really sick i mean there would be an issue with dosage right like you can obviously Great. like how many joints are you going to need to smoke or whatever if you have a serious illness as opposed to being able to get it in an extract or some sort of edible like it just makes a lot more practical Especially if you're well. using it for sort of a maintenance thing, right? Because then it's it's going to be longer entering your system. You're not going to kind of get the, the rise and fall that you would get from a joint, for mm -hmm. example, right? Yeah, and let's be clear, edibles is not exclusively brownies, right? If you go to uh, the U.S. and you go to a state that has a legal regulated market, there's a vast uh, number of options from a gum to a mint uh, to highly unsexy highly uninteresting to kids' products, right? But that are just easier to consume. 
The other issue is that in Ontario specifically, um, there's very few places where it's going to be legal to even consume weed outside of like other than your own home. They're not making it not legal if you're in to. A condo. Exactly, or if you're in public housing, um, but you know it's basically going to be illegal to smoke weed anywhere. So they're not really giving people a lot of options if you take edibles out of the mix. And now there's even condo and apartment like owners or landlords who are fighting for the rights to say no, not even on your own balcony. Like don't want it anywhere. So so ludicrous. It's like, ridiculous. They, 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 I mean, they would uh, be in a situation where they could say like no alcohol in your uh, condo. We would never ever contemplate such a thing. Yeah. And somehow they can say no cannabis on your balcony. Yeah. Yeah. Mm, because of the smoking aspect. Right? Well, but That's... but but we have an easy solution there. <laughs> like uh, edibles. Uh, uh, why not have you know you're saying wait six months. Well, why why wait six months? Why not have ten milligram or five milligram doses of edibles uh, right off the bat? I'm not saying we should necessarily wait six months. I understand the practical reality of waiting six months. You, you know as, as well as I do. Government as, bandwidth? Yeah, just bandwidth. We, we can't forget that the government never moves as fast. We had a prime minister who ran on a platform and then is actually going to deliver on said platform. Well, that's pretty rare. And this is a fairly monumental change, right? So I get that in Canada, this is a hard thing to put in place. Could we make uh, edibles? I think potentially, but I also understand that everyone's heads already exploded, so. I mean, yeah, I'm not saying that we should wait. I'm just saying I understand what they're doing, but I also think the smarter thing to have done would have been to let LPs already start selling edibles or providing edibles to patients, and that would have paved, like that, that would have yeah. paved like a legal blueprint but they didn't do that. Well, and this, was, <laughs> this has been kind of the excuse all along ever, ever since Smith, right? Was that the Food and Drug Act is just too complicated. It's just too big. The They're Smith not... Supreme Court case, right? Yes. That, that allowed people, the LPs, licensed producers to sell edibles. Or, well, sorry, sell oils. oils, yeah. 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 And, mm -hmm. and uh, even that was begrudging because, you know, the court said you need to let patients access in other forms. And so they said, okay, a small capped concentrate, that'll be fine. Um, which is not what I believe that court case was was actually saying. And so until we actually get there, that, that's going to be a problem. But but the Food and Drug Act, for some reason, seems to be just this monolithic thing that they don't want to touch in terms of cannabis. Um, so yeah, I, I also agree. I don't think there's any need to wait. There certainly isn't from a cannabis perspective. I mean, even the dose, like whatever the dose is, just as long as it's consistent, people will be able to figure out for themselves as long as it doesn't change from place to place, right? I think it will fundamentally be a huge mistake because you need to provide as many options as possible for consumers to consume. I should be able to have a cannabis drink that comes in a tall can, that doesn't give me a hangover, that lets me experience cannabis the way I want to. Well, and that's that's a piece that's been missing. You know, I point to New Hampshire's rules a lot because it didn't come from voter initiative. It actually came from consumer affairs going, you know what, people are buying this. It doesn't matter if it's illegal. They're consumers. We need to protect the consumers. And that's that's the piece of the conversation that's been missing all along. There's, there's no consumer advocacy group that's worrying about what's happening to the consumers, right? And it's basically just the industry. No, they're, they're really legalizing this sort of like begrudgingly kicking and screaming. I mean, no aspect of this has been consumer first or like, what would people who consume weed like? It's all been like, you know, protect the kids. <laughs> Legalization for re-election. Yeah. 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 Fulfill one province. It puts a bigger yeah. education bar. Like you have to educate people more yeah. for selling edibles. But like, uh, that, I get that. I get with chocolate or whatever it is, there's, you know, higher likelihood. We could just use alcohol again pretty easily though. Like parents will leave their alcohol well, out, no problem. And like, we're not worried about a kid just fucking chugging vodka. And well, liquor cabinet will kill somebody, right? Yeah. yeah. So haven't they already come up with solutions like opaque packaging or childproof this and that? Yeah, everything's gotta be like childproof and resealable with childproofing. And plus, the, so the doses are gonna be 10 milligrams. They haven't said in Canada yet, been announced, but I think but... 10 milligrams is probably a safe bet. I mean, that's what it is in, oh, that's in low. Colorado. I don't know, like uh, the the edibles products I like the most uh, in uh, the U.S. are uh, lower lower dose. There's a mint product in the U.S. right yeah. now, and each individual mint in this pack is depending on the product, uh, one to two milligrams. So I can consume a couple of mints if I want, but I can also consume one mint. To me, that's much more optimal in the way that I'm going to use cannabis mm. than 10 milligrams. Right. I guess what I mean by saying that's low is that 
like it's not necessarily going to really fuck someone up. But you know what I mean? Even if they accidentally the example, ate it. I could take a bunch of mints. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So. But it affects people differently. I, mean, I, yeah. if I take a 10 milligram edible, I can barely order my dinner. Really? Yeah. Really? But it's, uh, you know, it just varies by person yeah. and tolerance. Yeah. Maybe my tolerance has gone up lately. I've been smoking a lot. There's a wide variance on tolerance, right? So <laughs> it's also going through a different. It's metabolizing yeah, differently. Yeah, uh, so for true, some yeah. people, that that makes a big difference. I, mean, I don't. I don't think I metabolize things very quickly. So edibles have never been great for me. So um, something like edibles absolutely should exist. It's not really for me. Mm -hmm. right. Fair enough. I think we can all agree the topic's still a little bit hazy. Thanks for joining me. Thanks. Thanks for having me.